Hello, and welcome to Red Files. Today we're going to be creating a simple input form on a Microsoft Access database. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is open up your Access database, or create a new blank one. When entering the database, you're going to want to first off create a table. This will be the table that your information will be inputted into and kept. So you're going to want to go to create and table. Secondly, you're going to want to save your table and give it a name. For this video, I'll be creating a deliveries input table, but we'll get more into that as we go through. After saving your table, you're going to go on into design view. This can be found in the data sheet tab and selecting design view from the list or already appeared. This will bring up the design view of your table. Here you have the field name, which is the name of the column of the information you'll be inputting, the data type, which will be the type of information that you'll be inputting, and a description, which isn't necessary but is always there if you need that bit of extra help in remembering. So, first off, the ID auto number should already be there. This isn't necessary, but it's always handy to have, and I'll, I'll get into that into other videos. First off, in my table, I'll be creating a delivery date. So I'll type that into the field now. And in my data type, I will select date and time. In the field properties at the bottom, I want to create this as a required tab to make sure that they definitely fill this in because this is something necessary for my form. So I'll change that to yes. Also in the field properties, I'll be going to input mask and I'll be selecting the three dots at the end of the row. If it asks you to save the table at any point, generally just press yes and carry on. In mine, I'm going to create the short date, so this is the date that will always look like that. Next, next, and finish. And that is that one done. Next, I'll be doing a destination tab. And I'll be creating a combo box for this. So I will leave this as text. And in the fill properties, under the tab lookup, in the display control, instead of text box, or in the drop down, create a combo box. This will then ask for a table or query, which is what we want, and a row source. So, first off, we're going to need another table. So, go to create a table the same thing you did before, and give it another name. And go to the design view. This time I don't want the ID auto number. So what I'll be doing is I'll be selecting the row and deleting it. I'll be then typing in destinations again. And keeping it as a text box. After doing so, I will save the table and I'll go back into the datasheet view. I'll then type in some of the some destinations that will be delivering to. For this instance, I'll just use three destinations off the top of my head. And I'll save the table. And now we can close this. Back in, the, in your table, under where it says row source, you can now select what table you want to have your information come from. In this case, I'll be using destinations. 
that's all you need to do for now and we'll come back to this shortly again I want this to be a required box so I'll type in yes there and that's all we need now. in the next one I'll be creating a packages delivered and I'll create this as a numbers for so only numbers can be inputted and again I want this to be required and then I'll be creating a comments box at the end and instead of text I'll be making this a memo this will give you a wider area of typing so you have more room so you can fit in a sentence at least and I won't keep this as required because this won't always be required so after finishing your inputting you want to save your table and for now you won't need this so you can close this now I'll be getting into your form so you'll be wanting to go to create and I'll be doing this using a blank form a blank form when opening your blank form always give it a name to start off with it's the best way of keeping it clean I'll be using this as deliveries input form and this is great form you then want to go back into the design view of your form again this will be in format and you can select it in the options on the far left so in your input form you're going to want to give yourself a bit of room a bit of breathing space you're first then going to need a form header and footer you won't necessarily need the footer but you can always close this up after you finish with it you're then going to want to put in your information that you want in your table to do this you want to go to the add existing fields tab under the design tab and this should bring up a list of tables on your right you're going to want to select the table that you want in my case this will be the deliveries and you're going to want to drag and drop all the columns that you're going to want in your form so drag and drop them into your form right to make this look good or to format it to look good you can do this any way you like but I'm going to show you my way today first off I'm going to select the labels which is the left side of the two I'm going to cut them and paste them into the form header I'm then going to align mine how I see fit or how I want them to fit in as shown and then I'm going to bring up the detail bar as far as I can to the top and I'm then going to align all of the boxes directly underneath them and you'll see why shortly so this can be a little bit time consuming from time to time but it does get there in the end and it does work out pretty well to sort out the layout of your form you can then go into the formatting part of it this can either be fun or boring however you see fit just to make this quick I'll be making them all red italic bold and in the centre right I will then want my form to create a new form underneath one after I've finished inputting so to do this I'll go to the property sheet under the design tab and I will select form under the drop down or you can press the small box in the corner of your form 
I'll then want to go to Format, and I want to select Continuous Forms. This will create a new form underneath every time I finish inputting. I then want to go to Data and create this as a data entry form so it does not show previous data I've inputted. Chances to yes if it is no. And then press the X. Then to make sure that my form makes a new one right underneath I want to bring the form footer to just underneath it and clear the form footer because I don't need this you may need it but I don't and there you have it, you've finished your form so you want to save your form and go into the form view select the form view under the tab and this brings up your form earlier I created a input mask for the date this is so it creates just how I want it. And you cannot input any differently, such as the year first or the month second. Under the destinations, I can either begin to type my destination or I can select it from the drop down. Here, you can only type in a number, so even if you type in letters, try to go to the next one, it won't let you. So here, type in the number you want. And then for the comments, we created a memo. So here you can type in whatever you like. And as you see, as soon as you start typing at the top, it will create one underneath. And that is your form. There are many other different things that you can do to add on to this, such as creating a button after you've finished to take you out of it or creating a button to go into it but I will be creating a video soon to show you how to do that maybe even add a password onto it but if, for now if you do have any any questions or extra information you think could be added to the video please contact us via our website or message us on YouTube or Facebook but other than that I want to thank you for watching this and I hope this really helped you so don't forget to check out our site, visit our Facebook page and check out our other YouTube videos. Thank you for watching.